I'm Jen Hitchcock, Vascular Axis Lead Nurse at Imperial College Healthcare NHS Trust in London. Today I'm going to be talking about the Bionic to TKO. This is a product that we evaluated from January to April of 2012, looking at the Bionic to TKO to see if it prevented occlusions in catheters. We are a multi-sited trust across West London, owned for three main sites. We have a large number of different specialities are located in our trust and they're all on specific sites. We have no dedicated vascular access team, but among the five PIC places, we place approximately 600 PICs per annum. Four of our PIC places are operating specifically from the outpatient parental antibiotic therapy service. The evaluation sites that we chose were the OPAT team at Charing Cross, the OPAT team at St Mary's, and from Hammersmith, the vascular access lead nurse myself. We had a low documentation of occlusion rates prior to this. Anecdotally, we can say that we had about a 5% occlusion rate in all PICs that were placed. And anecdotally, we know that there is a number of hotspots within our organisation where there are more problems than others. When we did the evaluation and started in January, by the time we ended in April, we'd managed to place 70 PICs. We had a full data set for all of those 70 patients. There was a dwell averaging from 2 to 133 days, with the average of 30.4 days. 27 patients still had the device in situ at the time the evaluation was completed, and these were working fine. When we looked at where we were placing them, 34% of the PICs were placed at Charing Cross, 22% at St Mary's, and 44% on the Hammersmith site. The three biggest areas where we replaced the PICs were for haematology, which accounted for 21% of all PICs, oncology was 20%, and orthopaedics was 14%, and that reflects the number of orthopaedic patients that were treated via the OPAT services at both Charing Cross and St Mary's. Having looked at the site and the speciality where we were placing PICs, we then looked at the reasons for the PICs being placed. And unsurprisingly, 57% of the PICs that were placed were for the outpatient parental antibiotic therapy group. However, 36% was for chemotherapy, which included oncology, haematology. This was important to know because there were different groups of healthcare professionals looking after these lines, both within the community and within the hospital. We wanted to see if there was any difference in how the lines were being cared for. Of the catheters that we did place, 86% were for PIC lines and 14% were for midlines. There were no problems associated with the midline catheters and any of the problems that we did see were all in the PIC lines. We also wanted to look at whether it was being affected by whether the patient was being treated in the hospital or outside of the hospital. A large number of patients had both inpatient and outpatient care 20% of the patients that we looked after had solely outpatient care. This was not in the community, this was coming into a specific day care centre where there were specialist nurses, specifically haematology and oncology. We could find no difference in the way that they are being cared for. Moving on to occlusions, which is what the Bionic to TKO is meant to prevent, we only had a small documented 5% of occlusions. But as I said previously, we did know that there was a much higher rate than that. We had two aspiration occlusions, meaning that we could flush the catheters, but we couldn't aspirate any blood from those in two patients. Working that out per dwell day, it was 1.4 per 1,000 catheter days of an aspiration occlusion rate. Both of those patients were in haematology where mainly their care was being delivered in the specialist unit of the haematology day care, and those occlusions occurred at 59 and 60 days respectively. We had a further aspiration occlusion and a patient that was transferred from one of our hospitals to another, and it became apparent when we went to review that the aspiration occurred after the Bionector TKO had been removed and replaced by a standard Bionector. We had only one full occlusion, 
And once again, on review of that, it appeared that the Bionic de Tecchio had been removed and the occlusion occurred after that. There were a number of other complications which we always want to look at. We do are able to see what our infection rate is and any other problems, so we also wanted to make sure that the Bionic de Tecchio didn't attribute to any further infections. We had four catheters that were removed in one particular speciality because of neutropenic sepsis and therefore all catheters are removed irrespective of whether there was any positive microbiology or not. We did have one patient who had a methicillin sensitive staph aureus cultured from their catheter. It is unclear whether this was catheter related or catheter associated as there was no peripheral blood culture. We therefore cannot be sure um, what the cause of that was. The patient who did have a full occlusion, we were able to successfully use urokinase to unblock the catheter and there were no further problems associated with that catheter and the TKO was reapplied and there was a remaining 35 days of dwell in that catheter. Looking at all of these results, we felt that across the specialities that we placed the lines for, that the reduction in occlusions and aspiration in occlusions was sufficient for us to conclude that the Bionectar TKO appeared to do what it says on the tin, it prevents occlusions. However, we do note that there was increased surveillance of these catheters at this time, and because there was more presence of the staff that had placed the lines within the clinical areas, there was also an increased amount of education going on at the bedside. So these could have also been a factor.